This is Laura Chappell and welcome to Wireshark Tip 22. If you want to follow along on the days that I release these tips, you can follow me on Twitter at Laura Chappell. Wireshark Tip 22 is to enable the Calculate Conversation Timestamps TCP preference in order to track TCP delta times. Now these TCP delta times are different than the time column being set to seconds since previous displayed packet. And I'll show you that inside of a trace file. I've opened up the trace file called http wireshark download slowpcapng And you can get that trace file from wiresharkbook.com. It's one of the supplement trace files for the Wireshark Network Analysis book. As we look at this trace file, we can see that we have a client that's doing a name resolution for the IPv4 address for www.wireshark.org and then doing a name resolution for the IPv6 address for www.wireshark.org. And we can see that uh, the client made two of those requests for the IPv6 address. So perhaps a timeout uh, occurred waiting for the response. We can see, well, the response wasn't that slow, but we see that the client does a SYN, we see a SYNAC, we see an ACK, we see the GET request ACK, and then we see the HTTP uh, 200 OK. When we're looking at this time column on the left hand side, I've set my time column to view, time display format, and second since previous displayed packet. So the delta value that I'm seeing in there shows me the time from the end of one packet to the end of the next packet. As I look through this trace file, at different points, I'll find additional connections taking place. And these connections may become intertwined. When they become intertwined, where I see a packet from one TCP conversation followed by a packet from another TCP conversation followed by a packet from another TCP conversation, then this, TC, then this uh, time column really doesn't do me a lot of good. It doesn't take into account that these are separate conversations, and I really want to track the time deltas in separate conversations. We can do that by changing one of the default settings for TCP preferences. In the detail window, I'll right mouse click on a TCP header and go up to Protocol Preferences. Now I have Calculate Conversation Timestamps already enabled. And I would suggest that you enable that in your default profile and all profiles. We simply click on it in the preferences area here. Once you've enabled that, then at the bottom of the TCP header, let me scroll to the bottom of this TCP header in this packet. Let me get the packet highlighted up above. Here we go. In the bottom of the TCP header, you'll see a timestamp section that has square brackets around it. Anytime you see square brackets around something in Wireshark, it's an interpretation, it's not an actual field. For example, there's no stream index field in a TCP header. That's a Wireshark interpretation. Well, this also is not a field down here where it says timestamps. But when you have Calculate Conversation Timestamps enabled as your TCP preference, this area provides you with two time values. One of them will show you when this packet arrived compared to the first frame in this TCP conversation or stream. And the next one will show you the time since the previous frame in this TCP conversation or stream. And that's the one I care about. If I look down in the status area, the status bar area, I can see that the name of this field is tcp.time underscore delta. Once I knew that once I know that I can create coloring rules based on that to, to call my attention to large delays in a TCP conversation. I can right mouse click on this line and apply this as a column. That was uh, Wireshark tip number 23 was to add that as a column. Once I have it as a column, of course, I can click on it twice to sort from high to low and then go to the highest delay points in the trace file. Keep in mind when you're looking at delta times and troubleshooting performance, we really don't care when there's a large gap in time before a TCP reset or a fin packet. Those are typically the timeout processes that occur transparently in the background as a user you know, goes from one browser tab to another browser tab. We do care about any delays before the server sending data. Here we can see a retransmission with data in it. 
we've got to be a little bit careful about delays before a GET request because that may be because it took a while for a user to click on the next item on a web page. But in general, this is a great column to have and it's a great feature to enable in inside of Wireshark. It will really help you spot large delays a lot faster. When we reorder this by the number column and go back up to the top, we can move this column over to the left hand side. I'm going to click and drag it over next to my time. Oh, let me drag one more column over. And then I'm going to rename this column. I'll right mouse click on the column heading and select Edit Column Details. I'm going to name this simply TCP Delta. We can see the difference between the two columns when all of a sudden our traffic is interspersed and we have multiple connections taking place and they're um, intertwined. We can also see that there are no values in any of the UDP based traffic of course because we don't have uh, any TCP header and UDP traffic. So it's easy to see the difference between the TCP Delta column and the time column. Time column just looks at every packet regardless of whether it's part of a single stream or not. Whereas the TCP Delta column is providing us that information for each TCP connection separately. To read these tips on the day that they're released, you can follow me on Twitter at Laura Chapel. And for more information on Wireshark training or tips, you can visit chapelu.com.